Welcome to Reinventors Roundtable and our signature series on Reinvent America and this week's session on reinventing Spectrum's future. We've got 85% of the commercially available Spectrum is already being used with our data-driven smartphones. For a lot of people, don't I don't think understand how pressing and challenging this, this problem is and how, how we really got to pull this off pretty fast. So why don't you lay the terms of what, what are we up against and what the options are here? I don't think we faced as a nation, as a society, an issue of such technological urgency as the issue of what we're going to do with the future of Spectrum. The problem is, is that there are so many wireless devices today, not just the phones that we're using, but connected devices, the so-called Internet of Things. Mobile data traffic in the United States uh, is expected to increase by 2017, 700 times from 2007. If you look at it in a different way, by the end of the decade, connected devices, the, on my refrigerator talking to the cloud, for example, uh, will account for more than double the global internet traffic that existed in the entire world last year. Our, our lives, our world, our communities are becoming so inundated with data driven by spectrum that there is a legitimate and significant both engineering and policy and economic impact that we all could face if these airwaves become so saturated that they in a sense grind to a halt or a standstill. I think what we're doing right now with regard to how federal government uses spectrum is, is, is somewhat insane. We do not as a nation know what our federal government agencies, where they have spectrum, how often they use that spectrum, what their future needs for spectrum are. We don't have a good inventory. And for whatever reason, we've not been able to force an inventory. If you look at innovation, if you look at our global competitiveness, there are so many things we need to work on with regard to spectrum. There's probably nothing, no federal resource we have that has as much upside value for our nation as Spectrum. Internet of Things, cloud computing, big data, um, wearable devices. I can't imagine any resource, you know, whether it's Fort Knox or federal land or oil rights, that we would treat as cavalierly as we treat Spectrum. Uh, I believe that Spectrum band sharing is the most promising way to turn today's perceived scarcity into abundance. I love the concept of Spectrum sharing. Spectrum sharing is not ready for prime time. Try and share a complex commercial technology with a government system that works in a totally different way, you end up with complexity exponentially multiplied. Wi-Fi is already doing this to a great degree. We know that, it, that Wi-Fi is already carrying at least a third of the mobile device traffic in the U.S. In Europe, wireline carriers have built out more than 10 million Wi-Fi hotspots. They're turning all their customers into into Wi-Fi hotspots that are available to all their other customers, as well as anyone who wants to, you know, buy a day pass or a week pass like you would on an airplane. I, I do have some concerns about Wi-Fi and it's and what we're talking about and its implications of the digital digital divide. Wi-Fi has huge potential, but it has we have to make sure that we're not just looking at a potential of upper income um, folks in who are subscribing to services and live in affluent neighborhoods. I think that spectrum sharing has long-term potential, but I don't want to make short-term decisions based on long-term potential. And I worry that some of the folks who are making the decisions don't have the diversity of thought and input into these decisions that they need to make sure they're not disproportionately negatively impacting communities that are just coming into this system and that really, really are embracing it. Um, let's not inadvertently short circuit um, that progress. What needs to get solved next and what, where would you kind of put your focus in the next 18 months to two years? We really desperately need a, a spectrum inventory, uh, particularly of the federal spectrum because legislators and even regulators are flying blind. I'd suggest that on the sharing track that we particularly move ahead with expanding the unlicensed sharing of the five gigahertz band, which is going to allow for the so-called gigabit Wi-Fi, much wider channels. I'd like to have somebody give me a, a, a timetable of what spectrum sharing would look like in the next six months, eight months, 12 months, 15 months, five years. If we had a really good sense of what people think is the art of the possible with spectrum sharing, we could allow investors and innovators to make um, better decisions. Until we get clarity around what the rules are and how they're set set up, then I think that the street is gonna still be, it's still that question of what is the longer term return on investment thesis here. 
from an engineering perspective, what engineers want is not that different from what people want in business. My net recommendation for policy is clarity and simplicity. The longer term, beyond the next 18 months, well, what's going to be important? Here is where I think the most profound reinvention opportunity can come to play. Can we proceed to rely on an asset that is fixed and finite, but which is indispensable for the future of our social fabric and our economy, but is still largely managed by agencies that exist in a few zip codes in a one town in our country? Is it time for a longer term think about what is the proper role of government in the overall management um, allocation and determination of how and where spectrum will be best used for the best purposes for the future of our economy? I don't think we're going to be able to get our, our, our arms or our minds around that challenge today at this reading, but eventually we will, eventually we must. And that's in, the, in a sense the grandest reinvention challenge before us.